Welcome back to the studio for another Gear or Gadgets. This is really quickly becoming one of our favorite pillar pieces of content to produce and the feedback that we're getting, it seems like the audience is enjoying it as much as we are. So um, back at it again today, we have Josh Peachy in the studio. If that name sounds familiar, he was featured on Whitetail Cribs a year ago, something like that. Yeah, about a year and a half. A year and a half ago. Uh, he's a local guy right here, you know, known since high school basically. Um, so, known him a long time. Anyways, he's in the office today. Before we get started in this episode, we wanna lay some ground rules out. Even though you've watched the show, we always gotta do this. Rule number one, um, we're not here to brand bash anybody. So we'll talk about products, give you our opinion because we've spent money on all these products. Again, none of this stuff is given to us for free. We've spent money on all this stuff. So we're gonna give you our opinion on whether we buy it um, again, whether we think it's a waste of money, whether we think it's gear or gadget, but we're not here to specifically bash any brands. Rule number two, and I don't know if this, this is gonna be hard for you or not, I'm not sure. You cannot use the term or verbiage game changer. It's not allowable. In fact, we added some layers to this rule and as Cameron is flipping that razor around in his finger, if someone uses the word game changer on the show, their tongue gets cut out. And you're banned, exiled from the studio forever. So far we haven't had to do that yet. I hope we never have. But, rule number three, if you guys enjoy this, uh, you know, enjoy the content, smash that subscribe button for us, give us a thumbs up, leave us some comment, comment uh, give us some feedback on the episode. So with that, I think uh, we're ready to get into it. I want to go first. Um, I have a consumable or edible product, which is kind of weird. You think about my hardo style and not like living from comfort and everything <laughs> needs to be more difficult than what it is. This is kind of outside the box for me a little bit. But what I have, what I brought in is pour over coffee. Um, you know, on a typical weekend trip for me, a lot of times I'm hunting out of my vehicle truck camping per se, so I'm packing protein bars, whatever, whatever the, the very least amount of um, added items I have to worry about, like whatever's easiest, that's what I'm packing. So it's protein bars, dry oatmeal, and basically water on these short trips. And I talked about this on a podcast with uh, Byron Horton, maybe last fall. However, um, you know, during last November, being gone for two weeks, roughly two weeks, a week in Missouri, and then, you know, uh, a week here in, in, in Southern Ohio, Clint brought up some of these um, pour over packets uh, out to Missouri. And even though it doesn't fit my hardo mentality, it was awfully nice to have some of this stuff in the morning. Uh, maybe not day one, day two, day three, but like day four, day five, um, there was a little bit of enjoyment when we had hot coffee in the morning and not have to worry about a freaking coffee pot. So I'll give you a quick demonstration on this. And I bought a bunch of these. Uh, and I bought them for specifically for this Idaho trip coming up two weeks out, you know, camping. Some of it's going to be backpacking. Uh, I'm not bringing a freaking coffee pot. My gear bags already backpacks already 50, 60 pounds. It's heavy enough. But anyways, I brought these, uh, I bought a bunch of these. Now the convenience factor is really cool. You can drink a hot cold. Um, I'm not really like a super coffee connoisseur. This specific brand is Skull Brew Coffee. I got the t-shirt on or whatever. This specific brand is owned by Clint Campbell Truth from the Stand Podcast. He's a good friend of mine. We hunt together and he gives, um, I think 10% of all proceeds or maybe 10% of all sales yeah. go back to conservation. So that's one reason I purchase these. And then uh, two, it's good coffee. So uh, anyways, give you guys a quick demonstration on what you do. And this is just gonna be like a, a, cold, uh, a cold demonstration, but you get your cup, you have your packet and it comes with like these little tabs or like ears, I guess, is the easiest way to um, kind of display it. The deal just kind of sits there like this and basically rip the top off, opens the pouch up, and then my favorite purchase of 2021, this Grail um, filter, 
plunger style filter, you just basically fill this thing up and gravity feeds it. That's really cool. And at the end you have some primo freaking coffee. And drink. you could do that, like boil some water out of a jet boil. And yeah, typically you would use a jet boil, yeah. In the mornings, you know, you, 30 seconds you have boiling water with a jet boil and boom, pour over coffee. Um, and you got hot coffee in the morning. So Man, that's pretty neat. Yeah. So that's uh, like when we go camping and stuff, I have, I always bring instant coffee. Mm, yeah. So that's a lot easier than taking around that giant yeah. jar of instant coffee and it doesn't taste good. No, this tastes way better. Um, yeah, Clint's coffee's really good. I've never had the pour over, but the, yeah. his coffee's really good. Yeah, no, yeah, for sure. I mean, they're, it's not something you would buy every single day because it's, uh, regardless of what band, brand you buy, it's kind of expensive. They're like, I don't know, three bucks, two bucks, three bucks. Like to me, that's for on a coffee. Yeah. I mean, I, it's in line with like going to Starbucks or something, but I usually don't spend money right. on, uh, on that kind of stuff. But convenience factor for a backpack hunt or even like a, all day sit in the whitetail woods, you need to pick me up. Oh, yeah. Pull one of those out. Like, I could see that fitting uh, all day rut sits, like scouting around even. You yeah. need a little pick me up, just pull one, pull one of those out. They weigh that next to nothing, so yep. you don't even know you have it on you. The heaviest yep. thing is about it's carrying your cup around. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Your water bottle or cup or whatever you're doing, yep. But um, yeah, pretty neat product. Um, again, used for the first time last year. I have a pile of these at home for. Uh, this coming fall for that elk trip in uh, Idaho, and then the Kansas trip, obviously, with Clint. We'll have a bunch of these floating around our uh, round trailer, so pretty unique product. Short, sweet, simple. It's a piece of gear by IDM, and I like it. Yeah, I would agree. I, I'd say it's gear. I mean, your mental focus and sharpness out in the woods is important, and if you're dragging ass out there, you're not hunting the best you can, and if that's what it takes, if you're a big coffee guy or you need an extra pickup and being able to have that on you like weighing next to nothing and at the convenience of just pouring some water in a pouch and you getting coffee out of it gear gear for sure awesome do you buy those directly from him yeah um so it's like a it's a d2c company just right on the right on his um website skull brew coffee um i think skullbrewcoffee.com i think is what the website is but um yeah you can go there and buy like coffee by the bag by like a couple pounds at a time, or you can get these um, get these little pour over packets. Pretty cool. So, well, I'll set this off to the side and start drinking this. But let's um, let's move on to what you brought in, Josh, because I think this is this is going to be pretty interesting. So, I didn't physically bring anything. Uh, what I decided to do, just because it would be an easy talking point, I think, is. Uh, mobile apps for determining what days are good to hunt mm -hmm. uh, whitetail. Am I allowed to use names of, like the yeah, names of the? Sure. Okay, so like Drury's, uh, Drury's have DeerCast and Jeff Sturgis, I think he just came out with. With the HuntWise stuff, yeah. Hunt, yeah, HuntWise. Um, and basically what it is, it's, it's uh, an algorithm put together of all these different uh, things that they they include into these algorithms for for example on here like there's um sunrise sunset uh moon phase uh when the moon's overhead when, or when the moon rises when the moon sets um it tells you precipitation barometric pressure wind speed wind direction but then at the bottom i should have sent you this uh, screenshot um but at the bottom you can see it has like whether it's going to be a good day or an okay day or a great day or a poor day. I use it. I don't use it probably for the purpose it's designed for. Mm -hmm. um, but I use it because it's just a collection of data all into one app. Um, instead of going to like a um, weather, weather.com or something like that, finding your, um, what your temperature is going to be and mm -hmm. your wind direction, then going to I have like time and date. I used to use time and date for the moon phases. Um, so this is all just a collection of data, all available um, on one page. Mm -hmm. um, I don't use it as a so much a tool for telling me when to go hunt and when not to go hunt. So is the, I'm assuming the weather input, like the data inputs are zip code driven? Yeah, so at okay. the top here. So the nearest, the nearest 
probably weather station to that zip code is where they're pulling that information from. Yeah, like this one picked up last night, this one picked up at Warren, um, which is, you know, 10 miles from where I'm at or right. where I was. Um, but I mean, it's, it's close. It's probably the same thing that all the other apps do, I'd imagine. Yeah, yep. So and there's a couple, I shouldn't say couple, there's a lot of these things coming out. Um, you know, the, the pay to play apps, to give you advice on when to hunt. I think that there's, you know, the weather stuff is important. I think, um, you know, everyone has a different perspective on like cold fronts, barometric pressure, all the external factors and wind speeds and things like that. Um, to me, it's, I would never purchase an app like that. I, like if it was free, I, I'm not sure I would even download on my phone because my phone's so cluttered. But like using Weather Underground, um, I could see all that just on a regular weather report. And having, see the tricky thing about this specific app is like you don't know what points are weighted inside that algorithm. So it's like, are they putting more weight on the barometric pressure? Or are they putting more weight on a temperature, a 10 degree temperature drop? Or are well, they- You'll cut, kind of, if you follow the juries, you'll know. So the- I, the juries are big barometric pressure people. Right. So that's gonna that's gonna be a higher rating for them. And then you could take the same day and put it into Huntwise, and Jeff doesn't consider the barometric pressure at all. Right. And it could be a completely different. But from my point is like when you look at Huntwise and look at like Jeff's algorithm, you can very easily see like what's weighted and what's not weighted. Yeah. Can you find can I don't have that app, I just but no, does, on this, does, yeah. does does this app so what it does at the top, and I don't play around with this too much just because I use it for the data. I don't use it for their opinion on, right. on, on what it, because of what you're saying with right. things being weighted. Um, but what you can do, if I understand this right, and I've never played with it, but at the top where it has that plus and minus sign, you can slide it one way or the other based on what your experiences are maybe. So like if you, oh, okay. if you have a good, or if it's saying that you're gonna have a good day, but you experienced a terrible day then I think you can slide it over and okay. say this. Uh, and I don't know if that changes the algorithm or not. Again, I don't I don't use it for that purpose. I use it just for the information that's there. Um, but I didn't realize that. I think that's that probably, a, go ahead. There's an app that you use that gives you all that information where I don't have to pay. Yeah, Weather Underground yeah. is what most guys use. That's what Jeff always started using before yeah. he um, released the Hotwise stuff. But yeah, Weather Underground's much better on a computer than it is on your phone. True. But the app on your phone still will tell you all that. You'll, you'll get a barometric pressure. Reading. Weather Underground, like the mobile app though, is missing something. I can't remember what it is. It might be the transit yeah. times on the moon. It might be. It tells you the moon phase. So. Um, I I don't know, we'll have to check check on that. I know if you just use your browser and go to the website, everything is on the website. Yeah, that's But there's really a discrepancy nice. between the, their mobile application and the like the desktop or the actual browser. I don't even have a desktop anymore. Well, just the yeah, just, just the, the browser in your phone. Or something. Yeah, okay. yeah, you, you can pull it up that right. way. It's, that's pretty intuitive. I mean, it's it it'll tell you everything that you need to know. And historically too, so you yeah. can go back multiple years. That's nice because I I do that all the time, sitting down and finding out, like going back on the dates that you've killed bucks, mm -hmm. just to do some research to see. Um, that'd be convenient. Yeah, that's nice. One thing I was going to mention the um, the. I guess self input, like on the slider, on where to dial that thing in, like based on your personal experiences. Like, I'm going through my mind. Like, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or if it's a bad thing. Yeah, you can butcher that. Oh my really god. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You could have a really bad. Um, you could think like you had a really bad night and got winded by a giant, or like you got winded by a little button buck that, that yeah. was up at four o'clock like, oh, in the afternoon. I had a bad time. <laughs> like, that yeah. could screw up. If they take that into consideration, like for just you or is that data that they're collecting for everyone? Like there's some people that could probably say like, I had a really bad time on this day. Well, yeah, I don't want anybody else's input effect in my. Right. Well, I don't yeah. think, and I could be wrong. I may be wrong about all this. This is just what I picked up on. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think that that only influences you. Right, I would assume. Or, I'd hope so. Yeah, yeah, I would assume that too. But was, like you said, that that's a big point to this where there's so many other variables that can contribute to a good day or a bad day. Yeah, what do you consider good and what do you consider bad? 
yeah a good day on some public ground in um southern west virginia like you see one deer you're like hell yeah I had a great day yeah but that's not a good day anywhere else so right it, and, and all this information is only good if you're not blowing deer out on your way in mm -hmm. or if a wind doesn't swirl it mm -hmm. you know there's so many different things that are significantly more important than and i hate saying this because it's probably going to ruffle feathers but there's a lot more important things than the moon phase or the mm. pressure or even it's a stretch but even temperature mm -hmm. there's there's things that are gonna cause you to have a bad day that are gonna do it a lot faster than what and you mean is. like the wrong hunting the stand with the wrong wind or like in ingress or access basically ingress ingress yeah, yeah access um it, Anybody that knows me knows I'm super laid back about everything. Nothing will give me anxiety more than my <laughs> access going into the woods. I hate hunting mornings because I feel like I do more damage than good. Uh -huh. You don't know when you're blowing deer out half the time. Uh, I think access is huge. Yeah. Um, and it's way more important than any of this stuff. But. So in your opinion, when you look at not not just deer cast, but when you look at these apps, we'll just call them deer hunting apps. When you look at these deer hunting apps as a whole, which way are you leaning? Do you think it's gear? Do you think it's beneficial? Or do you think it's a gadget? A waste of money? Like what's? Well, if I knew that I could access all, of it, if all this information is available, um, the data, not the opinion-driven stuff. Mm -hmm. um, if there's other apps that are free, where I can get wind speed, wind direction. Uh, sunrise, sunset, moon, precipitation, all that information in one app, then I would say that I probably wouldn't purchase this, but mm -hmm. we didn't have this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Should have called me. <laughs> I'm not That's a technology person, so I don't We're know. We're here to help. <laughs> yeah. um, I will say that the one really cool beneficial thing about DeerCast that I do think is worth money is their blood tracking. They, See, I thought that was... I would call that portion of it gadget. I, they have like a little conflict here. I every like it. every possible shot on a deer that you could fathom making, you can go back and watch footage of someone hitting a deer there, and then they play out like what to do. Do you know how to find it on here? Or here, I yeah. just oh, you gotta upgrade to that. Yeah, you have to pay <laughs> for it. Yeah. But like you have to, uh, I think it's like twenty bucks for the year or something. It's not like a crazy amount of money. But just to get that second opinion on like, okay, I hit this deer here. Mm -hmm. I and mean, those guys have been hunting for how long? They, they've they been through every experience possible. And yeah. They, they have the video to prove what happens. So I think, um, I thought that was a pretty cool feature. Now, do I think you should have to pay 20 bucks for it? Probably not. But um, it's like, can I call up Mark Jury and ask him what to, I hit this deer here? No. So if I want to pay 20 bucks to get that second opinion, that's something that I would probably only pay for at the time. Like, okay, I'm about to lose this deer. Like in the heat of the moment, last resource. Last yeah. Re yeah. yeah, last resource. I can't find anything on the on the internet. Okay, DeerCast has this app. I can push it. Like, okay, I hit the deer right here at this angle. And they'll play a video and show me what happens. And then they'll break down, like, the blood trail, what kind of blood to expect, how long to wait, what can happen from there. So I thought that was pretty pretty cool. Yeah, it's that's, that's pretty... Um pretty unique like that's a I think that there is some value in there for people and again like I think the, these apps overall in general like they're cons they're selling you convenience yeah like like yeah. that's what you made mention of when you first it's all in one yeah everything's there in one so you're not scrubbing the web here and there and YouTube and Google and this website and that website uh, to find a lot of this information I think so when looking at it from a convenience factor, it, it, it is convenient. Like, could you find that quartering two liver shot or quartering away liver shot or whatever shot that you made on that deer? Like, could you find those videos on YouTube or oh. Google? Yeah, you could, but you might have to spend, you know, an hour maybe scrubbing the web and, and trying to remember which video said what. And like, I get it. And it could come from a source that you just don't trust. It could Very, be yeah. Joe Blow from where at, from the backwoods that, video to deer and it's like there yeah. probably should joe in the back <laughs> <laughs> but i just i mean mark juries all the all the juries intel's and i mean they've been yeah. through it they know what they're doing so yeah. i value that at some point now i don't i all but i do think they're I, I would lean towards the gadgety aspect especially if you start talking about like moon specific ones if you're using it 
for the purpose of deciding whether you should hunt or not, yeah, I would agree 100% gadget. Yeah, um, that's that's kind of what the yeah that's was going to be the last part of my uh, spiel. There was like, it's not going to tell you. It's never going to be like, yes, Cameron, it's a good day, go hunt, because it could be wrong. Like you have to trust your gut instinct and your own experiences to determine that. So, yeah, I would I would agree that that's gadget. Plus, you have to be a believer in all that stuff. Mm-hmm. The moon, the barometer, you have to believe that all that stuff plays a, a big enough factor to determine whether you're going to go sit in the woods or not. And you have to have the same feeling on it that the guy that developed the algorithm does. Yeah. You could think, like, I could have the opinion that, okay, barometric pressure does matter a little bit, but it doesn't matter as much as the juries think it does, and it doesn't matter as little as Jeff Sturgis thinks it does. I might think it has a little bit of play. So I'd need to develop my own app and my own algorithm to have that kind of conviction in it. Well, here's an idea for HuntWise or for DeerCast or any other deer hunting app that's out there. Just make the algorithm and the data inputs. Sliders. Sliders where you can adjust the weight of each data input. And then you've written the application, you've written, a, you've written the, um, you know, your algorithm, but you allow us to go in and weight it how we hunt and what we think is important. We all You'd probably sell a lot more of them. Cut that part out. We're going to do that ourselves. <laughs> we, well, everybody has their own hierarchy of importance of things. Um, I mean, mine personally, I, I would say it's all valuable, but the, the most important thing is your, your access, your pressure, what your neighbors are doing, what the coyotes are doing. I think all that stuff's way more important. Than, you know, if a, if a deer feels threatened, he's not going to, regardless of what the moon is, isn't going to come out when you're wanting them to. Yeah, especially 100%. when you're hunting small parcels like we are in Northeast Ohio, pressured area, um, like all that stuff gets thrown out the window as soon as your neighbor comes in and walks in and blows your stuff out or he's hunting the wrong wind, screwing you up. So yeah, I would agree. Like it's, it's all um, contingent on what's going on around you. If you think about the people that, that um, are really for moon phases uh, affecting deer and the barometer, all that type of thing. The people that get the most value out of that and see the most influence from that mm-hmm. are people that hunt um, the Drury Farms. You know, the, yeah. the 250 well acres manicured. that nobody touches yeah. Yeah. Uh, until it's time. Those deer, you would see, I think you would see the moon influence deer a lot more there. Yeah, because deer are acting like deer. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're not conditioned to like... I mean, their survival is still their first instinct, but they're not as on edge, I would say, as like out to outside factors. They're not as cagey. Yeah. 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 I, yeah I, I'm, I'm, I'm gadget. Something I would not spend money on. Cool. Well, I think we're all in agreement with that. Good, good product or good. Um, yeah, it was unique. That's yeah. not something, uh, you know, we talked on the phone the other day. You said, I don't know if you want to do it. I'm like, hell yeah. 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 Good discussion. Yeah. So I, I have, almost did that. I have stealth strips. Now, um, these things are lifesavers for the guy that is super picky on noise. These things are pretty, pretty great. Uh, my only gripe with them, well, actually, let me go back and I'll talk about the features of these if you're not familiar. It's just a kind of piece of tape that's fabric, like, uh, uh, I don't know, what kind of fabric would you call that? Fleece? Uh, I would say grove. Yeah, like, like micro like fleece, a fleece or micro suede, maybe. Yes, yeah, with, with an adhesive backing. Yeah, so you take these pieces, cut them into the shape or cut them in the size you want. And if you have any connection points on your tree stands or your climbing sticks or anything you want to quiet down, stick this stuff on there and tap on it. You can really tell the difference. Um, the only thing that I don't love about them is like they hold moisture. So if it's get, it gets wet, um, they could hold that moisture and then then they start to stink a little bit and they also get heavier if you're weight conscious like these things can hold a lot of water and add a lot of weight but for um if it's like going barebacked or using these to have something to quiet your stuff down i use them i have a um lone wolf double sticks here these things come out of the package like tuning forks yeah they're like very very loud and I um, had to do a lot of silencing to these. I taped the bolts, and but I have the whole back of it lined with stell stripping because when they stack, they stack so tight, and when it goes on top of the next one, it's really loud. 
So that still stripping kind of quiets that stacking portion down because that's when you're going to get the most noise. I'm not concerned about putting it on the tree and it making a lot of noise. I'm just concerned about like when I'm, it's early in the morning and I'm taking the sticks apart and you hear some loud tuning fork sound. Like if I didn't have that stealth stripping on there, it would literally it's, sound like a tuning yeah, fork. Yeah, really loud. high pitched. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, this stuff's great for quieting anything down. A lot of people use them on their uh, tree stands on all their connector, connection points. You could just use paracord if you wanted to, but this stuff's pretty convenient. You just, the adhesive on it is strong as hell. This stuff is not coming off easily. So yeah, stealth strips for me are gear. I mean, you know, across the board, I think um, Dano was the guy, Eastern, was it Eastern Outdoors? Eastern Woods Outdoors. Eastern Woods Outdoors. I think he was probably, I don't know if he was the originator of it, but I think he, like when people think of Stealth Strip, that they, they um, you know, they assume his name or like connect his name with, with the product, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So he's been at it for a long time. It, it's really applicable in a lot of different use cases. I have used that stuff on my sticks. I've done other things on my sticks. I think that the majority of the time that usually is the best, uh, I don't know what type of product it actually is, silencer, yeah. material, tape, whatever you want to call it. It it's, replaces moleskin. Yeah, yeah, a lot basically. Of use moleskin. But for what it is, it's probably the most applicable in a lot of use cases. Outside, like I think with stands, I just prefer to use the paracord, paracord to, to wrap the edges and those contact points. Um, but that's just a, a personal thing. They both do the service the same. Uh, You're in love with paracord. I love paracord. That's all it is. Yeah, pretty much. But um, no, I think, I mean, there's you're starting to see some other companies like trying to put their own spin on, on stealth stripping and, you know, whether it's any more advantageous than the actual stealth strip. I don't know. I don't, I'm not super familiar with the, I bought, some of the other products. I bought some, uh, no, I didn't buy it. I didn't buy it, but I was gonna buy the Lone Wolf Custom Gear Slayer Tape. Mm -hmm. And the advantage there is it doesn't hold water. Mm -hmm. It's not like a fleece backing. It's just a thinner uh, tape with like a rubberized material. It's more like rubberized than it is fleece. So it doesn't hold water. Mm -hmm. That's. Um, that's the difference there, but I think it's more expensive. This is pretty accessible. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Buy them, did you buy that in rolls? This actually came with uh, the Beast Gear stuff, the stealth stripping did, but um, I have bought the, I think I bought them for these sticks and rolls. I just bought a roll of whatever camo pattern it was, and uh, yeah, it's really cheap. I, I, I don't remember how much it was. It's been a while since, it was last year, but. I got him, he had a marked down, I think, to, and I could be wrong saying this. I shouldn't even probably say it, but I think it was like five bucks a roll. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's pretty cheap. It was way, way cheap at one time. So I bought a ton of it. Yeah. Because you can buy them per, like, if you tell them what sticks you have, he'll send you. Yeah, just the enough to cut. use that. Um, but yeah, I bought, and I use it for everything. I put it on the, the shelf of my riser, my bow. Um, I cut, like, little quarter inch strips and wrapped my, um, rest hmm. yeah you know, it's i use it for uh, i've used it to uh, because the camo pattern works really well like on the front of cam you know when your cameras are out in the sun for yeah. mm -hmm. years and the paint starts to fade on them and stuff i've used it just because the camo you know it's not i, I didn't have to go buy yeah. duct tape or anything so. yeah you can just cut a piece of this off and stick it on there yeah. yeah yeah there's a lot of use cases for it um i will continue to buy it i'll continue to use it on things that need to be silenced it seems like uh Everything that's coming out for mobile hunters and mobile hunting and everything that's really light is also really loud. So they kind of go hand in hand. If you want something light, it's gonna not be heavy and dead in that sound. So this stuff really comes in handy for that. I'm with you, I'm with you. I think it's a piece of gear. Gear, yeah. gear for sure.